I'm still not not athletic, um, but I went to basketball tryouts and I decided it wasn't for me. Um, so, you know, we have a number of, of, of paths here that we can take and I'll, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, sorry. Um, so we can go to the basketball tryouts. We have this choice. Do we stick with it? You know, it's hard. Um, do we stick with it or do we quit? Well, if we stick with it, and this is getting a little bit into the technical aspect here, I won't go too uh, far into it, but if we take this path, then we develop skills. Um, and if we don't, we don't get those skills. So we quit, we stay home. My interests were in video games, movies, books, music, any kinds of multimedia, um, together or separately. Um, it, it, it's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards video games. I think like, I, full disclosure, I, I think deep down music is my real passion and any, any vessel for music is a way to get me on board. Um, so I, I really enjoy those, those marriages of, of, of different disciplines. And it's, it's, it's a great uh, motivator for collaboration. Like when you're making games, for example, very rarely will you find one or two people who will do everything. Um, and, and I, you know, I suppose that's true of, of television and, and, and movies and, any sort of art, I guess, really will have, you know, another member at, at, uh, get involved at some point. Um, if not that, then, you know, the, the, uh, the audience, I think, is just as big a part of that. Like, they will be a part of it once it is out of your hands. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I'm derailing a little bit. Um, so based on these choices, you know, you get a little more autonomy as you get older. Sometimes, though, things happen. You, it, it's just one of those things that happens, you know, about you, around you, but without you, it's completely out of your control. Um, these things will happen regardless of, of what input you have, be it with a game controller or in your real life. Um, you know, uh, Full disclosure, like for me, like it was losing my mom. I lost her pretty early. So that kind of puts things into a bit of a state of flux where it leaves you asking, what now? You know, um, so, you know, there are a number of paths we can take. Um, let's say, for example, I did get those basketball skills. Well, from there on, you have a pathway to college basketball. From there, March Madness. And then you're faced with a decision. It's the last three seconds of the game. You know, do you go for a, a shot from, from the free throw line or do you take a jump shot? Well, maybe you take the jump shot, but you hurt your ankle. So now you're faced with another choice. Do you do physio or no physio? If we just go with the free throw shot, it goes in and you have a pretty straight shot to the NBA. But otherwise, you take the physio and you might be drafted into a Euro League. Or you may not get the physio and you might decide you want to coach teams. But let's say you're a big success. You get drafted to the 76ers. What's a big life event that can happen after that? Well, you know. Dr. J walks up to meet you at some big event. How do you react to that? You know, hopefully you have an awareness of who he is if you're in this point, um, but you, you don't want to insult him. Otherwise, Shaquille O'Neal is, is going to badmouth you on Sports Center. And, and from there, we have these other paths. Um, but, you know, you could decide, um, you know, it, it's, be nice to him and shake his hand. It's nice to meet you. And you get this photo up with Dr. J. And then you take that home and you put it on your mantle forever. If your NBA career stops, then you still have that. Nobody can take that away from you. Um, but that was not my path. That was not my path. Um, 
Another thing you could do is nothing. You know, every day you're, you're faced with the decision, do I get out of bed or do I just stay in bed? And when these big events happen, it can be really appealing to stay in bed. But if you just keep staying in bed, then eventually you'll just go right down here with nothing going on. So for me, what I did was I dove headfirst into my favorite art. You know, it was video games, it was music. Music, as, as I've sort of alluded to, was kind of the big thing that just really, you know, connected me with other people, um, even though I didn't know them. Uh, it just through this, you know, it's, it's a sharing of knowledge. All you have to do is, is listen. Um, and so I, 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 I kind of did that and that kind of went into my high school experience. Um, and when I was going through school, I um, did a, I had a ComTech project where we just made a little short film. Um, and we, we drafted a proposal and uh, we, we started going to shoot and we realized, no, we can have way more fun with this. And we actually lost marks on our project because we just decided to add a narrative and, and, and just, you know, it was cheap. It was on a budget of zero dollars. It was just me and my friend, you know, running around having fun. Um, but it, it turned out really well. I, I grew up in a small town, very rural, about a thousand people. Um, so you don't have a lot of, for someone like me, who's in, who's, you know, kind of a movie dork and all this kind of stuff, you don't get that kind of activity going on. So it was really just, I know this doesn't necessarily tie into games, but like I just was handed a camera and I just used it um, to the best, of, uh, the best of my knowledge at the time. And uh, it, it, it went places. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the following year after that um, first project, my teacher had come to me um, and asked me if I wanted to enter a contest. It was completely optional. I didn't have to do it. I could have said no, but I went and I made a little zombie movie with my friends. Um, I look at it and I lost it for a number of years and I found it recently and I cringe at it, but like it's, it's you know, it's, it's still one of those experiences that's kind of really near and dear to my heart. And it's, it's, it's great to have that record of it. Um, and it really lit a fire under me, at least for a while. Um, from there, I, I, I kind of left school and I went to college for uh, a programming course, which I decided I could either stay enrolled or drop out. I decided to drop out at that time. Um, you know, the, the, the place I went to, I, I wasn't getting the support I needed. Um, and I just decided I would go work for a while. Um, and, you know, the other option was I could have stuck with it and I'd have a fast track to like a nice government job, you know, doing some programming. Um, but that didn't sound appealing to me either. Uh, so I dropped out and I just decided to work and make a little money and just take the pressure off a little bit. Um, and I, I worked a number of small jobs here and there, nothing, you know, you know, working in this store, that store, um, working at a paint shop, all that kind of stuff. Just none of them were really for me. And then I was kind of starting to get a little, I was just going through the motions at one point, basically. And I just decided to look. And I found, um, I found a job for a game testing position in, uh, in my community which was a big surprise to me, um, especially at the time, this was probably six or seven years ago now. Uh, I didn't really, you know, we didn't have that industry here. Like we're not known for video games uh, so much, uh, but I, I applied for it. Um, and it, the job I got was not the one I applied for, but they realized like this guy is passionate about games. He knows what he's talking about. Um, let's hire them for the, the testing position. Um, and that was great. Um, 
like it, it just the work came very naturally to me. Um, the team we worked with were great, like just wonderful people, very helpful and kind. Um, the kind of people you want to be spending your time with, essentially. Um, and I learned a lot there. Um, I worked my way up the ladder a little bit. Um, at one point, there was. Uh, here I am, sorry. Uh, so at one point there was a promotion available. I just, again, it's a choice. You either go for it or you don't. Um, I went for it. I got it. Um, great. I, I stuck with it for a, a, a little bit, but then I decided it was time to move on again. Um, in, in like just almost serendipitously, I, I just happened to see an ad for, you know, this place Celtics, which, um, you know, I, I had, when I was trying to make movies, I was using the screenwriting software, like be before I even knew it was located in my town, which again, just these opportunities are anywhere. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I moved on. Um, I, I started working at Celtics um, and eventually I was um, presented with another question. Would you like to speak at the symposium? Um, I could have said, no, thanks. I'm too nervous as an introvert. However, I decided to say yes. And here we are. Um, and I, I suppose the point of, of all this is. One, I really like I can see the potential consequences of actions I do or don't take or have or have not taken. Um, you know, when I when I look at this, I, I think of all the missteps or, or perceived failures that I had. And I look at this and I'm like, no, this turned like things turned out the way I want them to be. Um, and I, I think that's kind of like the beauty of specifically game writing is that you have to take all of these individual moments and apply consequences to them. So you have to think about the consequences of actions and you have to think about how people will react or, or sorry, I should say how characters will react. Um, you have to figure out how to express it in different voices. And I find that um, game writing really um, presents you with a way to explore how different um, you know, actions can pay off. Um, so yeah, I, like, like I? yeah, this is my story, I, I, I suppose. And uh, you know, I, I guess the question that I would pose to you is, you know, very simply, what is your story? Because you have one. Thank you so much, Junior. I think that was just a great presentation of your life and just utilizing video game writing and to, to actually um, sculpt it out from the decisions. Um, can you tell us what is this process called that you just did from where you kind of like started at that very beginning and then how it got to the end? Um, yeah. So. I mean, I can show you sort of the process of, of how you would build out the structure, uh, certainly. Um, so normally you would start with a, a basic default structure, um, but let's just put a new sequence here uh, for now. Uh, I can take any of these sequences and I can apply names to them. So in this case, um, it was sort of that point of marking, you know, the, the point where you are in the world. Um, and from there, you can add sequences and you can go down a linear path and just, you know, keep adding things. But then eventually you come to a choice and you add a branch. And from there, you can add one. Let me spell that. And choice two. And all of a sudden, you have this um, branching pathway. And 
you know, you can use it to, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's very open to interpretation how you want to build out your structure and what things represent. Um, you know, you can color code choices as good or bad, for example, um, if you want to see it that way. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, I, I guess I just kind of went through, you know, the big significant points in my life where there were some big changes or, or big questions I had to ask. Um, you know, uh, they're everywhere. Of course, if, if this was representative of real life, this would be sprawling all over the place. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I, I suppose for the purposes of this, it was very self-analytical. You know, I, I, I had to, consider what my actions have done. Like in this context, it's more of how my actions affected my own self, but like your actions affect everything around you. Um, and in the realm of, of, of game development, like to speak to games versus films, films are usually very linear. Um, you know, to use that example of, of choose your own adventure books, it's, it's very similar to that. It's like, well, you know, do we go to page 15 or 92? Um, that's basically what that represents there. Um, and yeah, you can uh, add interactive dialogue so that, you know, if, if somebody, if you're representing a question being asked and the response given, you can do that and you can um, branch the story further off of those answers. So in this process, would a video game company, so say like I'm Epic and mm -hmm. I'm creating a game like Fortnite, or I don't know, if, um, would, so how would like, would they just start with this? It's like, I, I don't know, it's just a random world. I'm like, okay, cause I got my students here. I got Nancy, Zanisha and Anya. And I'm like, all right guys, um, let's make a video game <laughs> and you know, is this where you would start with that script? Very good question. Um, more often than not, I would imagine no. Um, most games tend to start with um, a prototype, a demo, um, a basic uh, structure of, of you know, how the assets interact with each, each other. You know, um, you know, you may be making a puzzle game that has a story, but you're making a puzzle game. So those elements are going to come into it first. And oftentimes you're going to work the story around that. Um, having said that, um, some games are very story driven. Um, Fortnite, maybe not so much, um, but, um, you know, uh, Telltale Games is one of our partners and, you know, they make very narrative games um that use choices a lot like this um they're just very this or that kind of of choices um that affect how the story will play out in the end um and when i was growing up i always enjoyed games where i could have multiple outcomes it really made me want to play games again and to see how my actions um could uh indeed like have more positive outcomes because the, the best endings were always the hardest to get so it, it was it was usually more of a struggle in that regard. I'm so glad that you said it. Um, we have Anongo here. Anongo, are, are you? I just wanted it because Anongo is actually a video game sound designer. Um, oh, wonderful! And and so I don't know if there's anything that you could chime in in this last minute as well when it comes to video games. I just wanted to introduce you. Yeah, thanks so much for making the connection. This has been a really wonderful talk um, to Thank just you. think about how you structure. Um, a game and then putting that in relief with your own life choices. I was just curious about what are some of your favorite games and um, what, what are your favorite game soundtracks as well? Um, I have two answers for that and they're both the same. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is the first one that comes to mind. Um, so that game, um, it, it, it sort of uh, took the groundwork laid by the previous game, but it was developed in a much shorter time. So what they did, they had less space, to, um, less area to use, but they put a three-day clock in the game where you would have to reset at the end of three days every time. 
And every town, every person in the town had their own schedule. They had their own lives, their own things that they had to deal with. And a big part of that game, apart from stopping the, the Groundhog Day like quality that um, surrounds it, is you just go around helping these people with their problems. And every time you restart the day, you have more knowledge of, of this person's life and what they're doing and how you can help them. And um, yeah, the, the, the soundtrack to that is very atmospheric and dark and just beautiful. And I love it. Thank you for that question. I, I, I'm always happy to talk about that game. Um, uh, likewise, uh, like what, um, I, I, I suppose I'd like to return that question actually. Um, so I know we're about to wrap up Final Fantasy VII, probably my favorite soundtrack, one of my favorite games, Metal Gear Solid. Um, I just love Mario Kart, Metroid. Um, my rapper name is Samus, and that comes from the video game Metroid, so that's a classic. Oh, uh, um, we're best friends. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm going to be part of a breakout room later, so feel free to, to drop by and we can have more conversations about, about all of this stuff. Thanks so much for this. Thank, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate the time, everybody. And, and thank you for uh, inviting me to do this.